What's going on, y'all? Welcome back to the madness. Today we're going to be doing another Axe Effects tutorial, and today we're talking about the MUX, or the multiplexer. Now this is something that's pretty near and dear to my heart in the engineering field, computer engineering specifically, and that it takes in multiple inputs and converts it to one active output at a time. This could be very useful in that we could take multiple strings of effects and uh, have them individually active at different times or different inputs at different times without having to have an input block specifically on the Axe board. And I'll show you what I'm talking about right now. Swoosh. All right, so here we are again. Bottom right some notes, me on the top right, Axe Edit right here in the center. We got a multiplexer sitting right here, and I'll show you what exactly that thing does in just two seconds. And if you guys are getting any sort of value out of these videos, just go ahead and smack the like button or uh, the subscribe button. It really helps a long way in getting my uh, channel kind of going. I'm trying to reach like 2250 subscribers by like, you know, the middle of this year, and I think it'd be, uh, you know, super nice if you guys would help me do that. Now, as I said before, multiple ins, one active out. Now you can select from all these different inputs as your main out active output. Now that's really good because your input can be legit hardware inputs, so in my case a microphone, or it could be row inputs, which means that you could have active effects chains up here, up here, up here, up here. All of them could be active at a time, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So per se, just, just because we're feeling frisky. Now I've got six active lines that I could ch you know, change whatever I want inside there, right? And within these active lines in here, I could have row one through six. Obviously from the top is one, bottom is six. So let's, let's, let's slap, a, uh, let's slap a, a, a chorus in here, right here. And let's slap a, a drive here Let's slap a uh, a rotary right in here. Um, how about a pitch? Or actually, no, no, no. Let's let's do something a little bit different here. Let's do a a delay here. Not a reverb. A resonator here. A flanger. That sounds reasonable. Now let's take row one. Let me grab my guitar real quick so you can hear what's going on. All right. So. And so that's a chorus right now. You can just change it. And now we select to row two. To drive. Wait, I didn't optimize this stuff. So row three, which is rotary. And now we've got, let's see, row four. We've got a delay. Now we got row five, which is resonator. Now let's go to the, finally, row six, which is the flanger. So what if I wanted to, per se, take my input from my, from my microphone and put it through, but not have my input block with input two on the grid. Is that possible? Let's bypass it, and I'll prove it by talking and you'll not hear anything. And then I'll select input two right here. Can't hear me, nothing. But now you can. Now, that's kind of interesting, right? Considering everything before here is no longer being used, but instead an input that's not even on the, on the map. That is pretty powerful because you could do things with this output now, such as slap, you know, maybe a delay in line here. Line here. Now my voice, now my has, voice delay. has delay. It just opens the path to a lot of new possibilities as far as routing your chains go. Now, let's show you another cool trick that you can do. Per se, you know, you've got all this stuff kind of set up in a weird way. You know, let's let's cut off the chorus real quick and let's add, you know, some delay here 
Let's we'll add another uh, another flanger up here. And then, you know, because we have some weird thing going on, like we have a bunch of routings that are non-conventional. Let's let's slap a uh, a feedback send up here. And then, you know, strangely enough, we no longer need this resonator. Actually, we no longer need this whole thing, right? And now, this becomes our send loop. Feedback return. Now we turn this up. Now, we've got this weird thing going on, right? Like, obviously, row 1 is no longer there. But row 5 has a return from this send. So what happens when I go to send again? Now let's turn this on. Set this to row 5. Now, what I'm showing you here is that these feedback sent and returns can also enable you to do some interesting things with the multiplexer. So, it just allows you to kind of create different effects chains in different ways. And that's what I'm kind of trying to get at is that the multiplexer is a very cool module. You can route things in very unique ways and create new combinations across many different lines and have one active input at a time. It's powerful stuff. Just play with it. I would encourage you to play with the multiplexer or the mux and uh, see what you can come up with. Now, I know that the past couple Axe Effects tutorial videos have been rather short, but that's because the modules I'm working on have been rather, uh, you know, simple. They're not, the, they're not the most complex modules ever, but I'll get to the more uh, complex ones, and I'll try to get to videos where I, I describe the changes that are made in, in recent patch notes as well. Of course, those will come after I complete this whole library of modules first. But I hope that you guys got something out of this. I hope that you learned something new. I appreciate you guys stopping in, and uh, I guess I'll catch you all on the flippy floppy, y'all. The flippy floppy. Ciao, y'all.